In this video, I'm going to show you a very simple route combination that you can use to keep your opponent honest out of the bunch tight end. We're going to be showing you a variation of P boot over that is very simple to run. And to be honest with you, I actually might even prefer it a little bit more than the standard way that most people like to run the PA boot over. Now, guys, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I upload new videos every single day that can help you become a better Madden player. And like I said, today we're talking about the bunch tight end. Now, if you want to get my entire bunch tight end offensive ebook, I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. Uh, but let's just jump right in here. So there's the, the combination or the route combination that I'm going to use. Most people, whenever they defend bunch tight end, because it is so difficult to get consistent pressure on bunch tight end, you're going to see one or two defenses. The first defense that you're going to see is you're going to see uh, a traditional cover three Mabel where they basically do this right here. Now, the beauty of PA boot over is you can do a lot with off of this. For example, uh, one of the things that we can do easily with this is we can roll out of the pocket and then we can try to run with our quarterback if we get a situation like that. Obviously, if you're mutt and you have Randall Cunningham, it's going to be a lot easier to do that. But the other thing that I like to do whenever someone starts to go to this cover three kind of Mabel uh, coverage is I absolutely love this route combination that I'm about to show you because almost every single time their user is going to have to kind of carry this crosser at least to the flat and it's going to leave some vulnerabilities over the middle of the field, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put our running back on an in route, we're going to curl um, the outside receiver, and then you have a choice. You can either block your tight end if you want to, or you can go ahead and streak him. If you streak him, the crosser is much more of a threat. Um, if you block him, then you're really kind of wanting to work the left side a little bit more. Uh, but anyways, let me show you what this work looks like. At the snap of the ball, our first read is our tight end. You're going to see that if they go to the crosser, the tight end streak is going to be wide open. A lot of people in bunch tight end, here's what they do. They're going to run boot over, and they're never going to put their tight end on a route. And to be honest with you, boot over is a really tough play but when you mix it in with some of the best routes in the game which come from a tight end uh, in that position right there where he's at I find that that is a much better strategy to use uh, whenever I'm running this offense so uh, again they're going to have to at least kind of at least they're going to have to kind of respect the fact that you have a tight end streak so it's going to keep their user on the right side of the field okay the next thing that you're going to see here is at the snap of the ball this crosser if you look if you really watch it um they see that tight end streak and again i butchered my user catch but um you can see the tight end streak is going to pull that out of the way and i'll show you that one more time so the bottom line is they're going to have to play uh with 30 yard clouds okay so they're gonna have to have some kind of 30 yard uh deep zone back there to be able to defend this or they're just going to have to use it all the way across the field which is even worse for them because everything else is going to be open so as you can see that gets wide open very good read okay so now uh what you're going to see here is you're going to get a coverage again that looks it's essentially like this and let's just kind of assume that they're going to kind of shadow the tight end and then they're going to go to the crosser that's where our running back and our and our curl come in so what you're going to see here is if they're playing any kind of flat coverage what you can simply do is you can typically hit this route to your curl now uh, i am putting a vertical hook there the problem is most people won't be able to put a vertical hook there the reason why they won't be able to put a vertical hook there is because if they do um they're going to get weak box this year so what they're going to do more than likely uh, is they're going to basically have something that looks like this it's because they have to have them in a three rec hook and the reason that's significant is you're going to see that this curl is going to get significantly more open uh, in that in that situation see that right there see how they all go to the running back and that's wide open now a lot of people in madden uh what they like to do and it's hard to show this in practice mode but i'm gonna try my best um is they want to use these curl flat zones because these guys if you think about it they're going to be on a, a cloud flat coverage right so to, let's just show it out of a cover two kind of style and hopefully that'll give us enough leverage so what you're going to see is you're going to have a purple uh zone and a like a deep cloud okay is what i'm trying to show here this purple zone is supposed to be a five yard zone what you're going to notice even in the even if they put that a five yard zone drop you're going to notice that it doesn't exactly play like it's supposed to okay so to kind of imitate this we're going to kind of set up a little bit of a hybrid uh, cover two coverage but i want you to see what's going to happen with this running back so now what you're going to see is these purple zones will all drift back 
And this running back route is typically going to be good for an easy three to five, seven yards. Keep your uh, team on schedule. Oftentimes that running back route will uh, just kind of get open. And the other thing that I like about that running back route is it really forces them to now have to play with traditional hard flats, which is going to open up your crosser even more. Because if they don't have a cloud, the crossing route to uh, to the triangle receiver becomes significantly more open. So again, you're going to see something like this. And like I said, they're going to use her uh, kind of this crosser. So the other thing, like I said, is that you've got your curl uh, on the back side. Now, which one other thing that you can do with this curl to make it a little bit more effective is you can motion it one step to the left. So if I did that right there, you're going to see that the, there's no yellow zone in the game that will get out there. And it also is going to open up a lot more space uh, for your running back to be open. So when you combine this setup with everything else that we do from bunch tight end, it becomes a very good setup. Now, let me show you this against a five-man blitz. So let's say, for example, that they decide they're going to blitz everybody. Well, obviously, you're going to have two reads right off the rep. You're going to be able to hit your tight end quick, or you can hit your crosser quick. So that's a quick read. But the other thing that you're going to be able to do is you'll see these hard flats really go out, and then I can just throw my curl. And as you can see, we're going to keep the offense on schedule and we're going to go for, you know, 10 to 15 yards. To me, this is a great play because what it does is it forces your opponent to have to drop eight to be able to cover everything. They literally can't cover everything if they don't. And then if they're blitzing you, um, like I said, pee it over and just kind of this, this whole um, – this whole offense in general is very difficult to blitz. Most people won't try to. Um, if they do blitz, it's simply to try to contain the quarterback on this side. So you're not going to see them get, they're not going to stand in the gap with their user more than likely and try to get the pressure to come in, even if they do. Okay, even if they do. Here you see the pressure should come in. Um, as you can see, my crosser was open there. Uh, I didn't show, I didn't hit it, but my crosser is standing wide open. Uh, my tight end is probably open if I go back and look at that. So, and, and again, if you're playing someone, you know, kind of the general way that people are going to do this is they're going to, um, they're going to hard flat. Okay. So if they go at the running back, you can easily hit this tight end streak right off the rip right there. That's kind of what I'm talking about. So that's where we really put them in a bind because they can't swoop both sides. So they have to choose. And then if you see the user, uh, if they, if you see the user go to the tight end, then what you're going to do, very simple, now you're looking to your running back. Most of the time, you can either hit your running back right here, or you can just wait on it and hit that curl, because if they bail at the snap of the ball, the pressure is way less likely to come in. So guys, this is a very simple setup. I think bunch tight in, I got to be honest with you, I think bunch tight in is probably one of the, it's got to be up there, man. And especially if you do some of the stuff that most people don't do out of this formation, um, you kind of try to mix in different things. For example, I'll give you another simple route combination that you can use. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, but this inside switch, the reason that I like this so much is because uh, this corner route to the tight end, I think is one of the most underrated routes in the entire game. And what you're going to see here is if I motion over Brown, create kind of a traditional flood, and then use this zig. Zigs are very underrated this year also, but what you're going to see is this corner route uh, really, really goes you know pretty deep down the field. So the point is you use some of these other little things to kind of throw the defense off, and you're going to find that bunch tight end is going to have a ton of power. Uh, I think that this offense, to me personally, is one of the most difficult offenses to face because PA boot over – you know, pound for pound is probably the best passing play in the entire game. You have that tight end blocking. You have that nice, that little route to circle gets open against almost everything. Um, you know, and if they hard flat, for example, you know, you can easily just playmaker it up. So you have so much going for you out of PA boot over. There's so much that they have to do to try to stop it. But then the bottom line is if they do stop it, then you can do stuff like this right here. And I think this setup, I'm telling you, um, this setup right here is really, really good uh, because the running back route is so good this year. It's better than it was last year. And if you have backfield mismatch or backfield master, um, the cool part is too, like even if they hard flat, you can throw this like right in there and you can just live with a couple yards. Just kind of quick throw, uh, get it out there. Uh, but anyways, guys, bunch tight end. I would really encourage you to not ran it at all. Um, it's a lot of fun. Try to run it a little bit more creative. Don't just run boot over. Um, but this little meshing concept right here, I'm telling you right now, this is a great concept. Um, that circle route, the beauty of that, like I said, you see there's no, very few zones actually guard it. 
okay? So you've got that on both sides of the field, and then their user has to deal with the middle of the field, but between the streak and the crosser. So to me, this is a great kind of counter to the PA uh, boot over. But anyways, guys, if you want to learn more about Bunch Tight End, I would really encourage you to check out my Bunch Tight End ebook. Um, you can actually get access to every ebook that I've released so far this year by joining my Patreon membership. For just 10 bucks a month, you're going to unlock every single ebook. I've released 13 ebooks so far this year. And the cool part about it is you're going to also get instant access while your subscription is active to any additional ebook that we do, any uh, updates that we do to all the other ebooks. And we've actually started putting pro player film studies in where we literally go step by step through what a pro player is actually doing in a tournament setting. So I would really encourage you to check that out. I think it's the best one-stop uh, shop for everything that you need to become a better Madden player. So again, patreon.com slash Cody Ballard. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. If you want to get access to all of that content for just 10 bucks a month, remember you can cancel that whenever you'd like to. You don't have to stay subscribed for a year to get anything, um, you just get it. 10 bucks a month, and then you can cancel whenever you want. So I would really encourage you while you're playing Madden, I would really encourage you to join that Patreon membership. I feel like that's probably the best place where you can start getting better as a Madden player. So patreon.com slash Cody Ballard. There is a link to that in the description. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you guys next time.